A national hero now exposed as a hideous monster. I raped her in, uh, in her house, and then I took her to the car. Decorated Canadian Forces officer Colonel Russell Williams has just confessed to viciously attacking several women and murdering 27-year-old Jessica Lloyd, then dumping her body. So where am I going on here to get to her? In this block here. A detailed map of that area, and I'll show you where she is. The cold-blooded colonel calmly sits and points out the general location of what's left of Jessica. While cops race to recover her, Detective Smythe wants to keep Colonel Williams talking. Do you want any water or anything? Sure. Okay, I'll be right back. He asked Williams about the two women he sexually assaulted in Tweed, the 21-year-old young mother and his neighbor, Lori Massacott. Hit her with my hand while she was sleeping. Subdued her, mostly just my weight on top of her. Had her take off her pajamas, took some pictures, took some of her underwear and left. The other woman? Same kind of deal. Off her clothes, took some pictures, and left. Detective Smythe steps outside where investigators are waiting. They download him on the latest evidence coming in or going out in this case. During the nearly 10 hour interrogation, the colonel's computer drive was flown to Microsoft in California. Armed with this knowledge, the detective rejoins the colonel inside the interrogation room. You can't erase things from computers. That's pretty common knowledge these days. It just doesn't happen. The colonel feels the heat. I'll tell you where the memory suit cards are. Where are they? They're in the house there, but... In Ottawa? Yeah. And whose images are on those cards? Uh, well, look, I've erased them, but I expect uh, you'll be able to draw images of uh, Jessica and I. Williams goes on to tell the detective they will also find images of the two women he sexually assaulted in Tweed. Russ, you're doing the right thing here. Okay. Well, again, my interest is in uh, making my, my wife's life a little easier. Easier? Probably not, as the colonel continues to share his dark and depraved play-by-play. -play. Why don't we start with Jessica? Okay. How does that start for you? Um, I saw her in her house on her crib now. Wednesday night, I guess. Then, by Thursday night, Jessica is at home alone in her bed when the colonel strikes. So I went through the uh, back patio door while she was uh, sleeping. Well, so I raped her in, uh, in her house, and then I took her to the car and took her to Tweed. Williams explains how he kidnaps Jessica and takes her to his home in Tweed, where he rapes and photographs her, torturing Jessica for nearly 24 hours and then promising to let her go. He tells cops it's a promise he never intended to keep. And then as we were walking out, I uh, struck her on the back of the head. What's the result? Her skull gave way a little bit. Felt like and there was a lot of blood, so I think that's what happened. She was immediately unconscious, and then I um, strangled her. In a matter-of-fact tone, the one-time commander goes on to describe how he cleans up his home and stores Jessica's body in the garage. Then he does the unimaginable. After committing cold-blooded murder, Colonel Williams says he flies to California on a military mission. It will be four days before the Colonel returns to Tweed to dump Jessica's body. Marie France uh, Como. She actually discovered me in the basement. She was trying to get her cat to come upstairs, and the cat was in the basement had seen me and was fixated on me in the corner. The colonel explains when Marie France investigates what her cat is staring at, she comes face to face with him. He's wearing a mask. William says he hit her with a heavy flashlight and... Tied her up, brought her upstairs, suffocated her. Right. Some tape. Did you take anything out of uh, Marie France's house or Jessica Lloyd's house? 
Uh, yeah, some of their uh, underwear. Okay, that's all. Well, not exactly. Remember his computer is with those tech experts in California? Turns out they discover thousands of highly secretive and organized files. He took photographs and he put everything on his computer. He's got them all cataloged on his computer. He's got a deep end, password after password. And when they unlock his password and open his files of photos, the colonel is out of uniform. He's wearing underwear. Ladies' underwear. What about anybody else's underwear? Yep. Photos. Of you in their underwear? Mm -hmm. While investigators continue to restore files on the colonel's computer and try to make sense of the strange snapshots, Detective Smythe pushes for more details about the kinky contents on the military man's hard drive. What kind of camera are you using, by the way? It's a digital uh, Sony. You just have the one camera? Yeah. And the video camera. Yes, video. Yeah, so I was running the video and then taking still pictures. So the video pretty much covers everything. Everything? While he's doing this to her, he actually captured her murder on video. The colonel admits he videotaped the rapes and murders of Jessica and Marie France, but he also captured something else. Sadly, their final words. After more than three hours of brutal sexual assaults, Marie France cried on video, stating, you're going to kill me, aren't you? I don't want to die. I don't deserve to die. I've been good. And Jessica's final words were for her mother, saying, if I die, will you make sure that my mom knows I love her? As the interrogation comes to an end, Detective Smythe has one more question for the military man living the ultimate double life. Is what you told me tonight the truth? Yeah. If for whatever reason you didn't end up on our, on our radar, so to speak, uh, do you think it would have happened again? I was hoping not, but I can't answer the question. Why do you think these things happen? Have you spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know the answers. And I'm pretty sure the answers don't matter. When the investigation into Colonel Russell Williams is over, police agencies from Ottawa, Orleans, Belleville, and Tweed will discover that the decorated soldier took panty thievery to the next level, with 82 break-ins during just two years. Many of the houses belong to his friends and neighbors, and even the most innocent of residents. So the trove of women's underwear came from the break-ins that he had done. They belonged to young women as young as a neighbor's 12-year-old uh, daughter. But the colonel didn't just save snapshots of himself and his victims wearing lingerie on his computer. He also saved them in real life in a secret room. During the break-ins, he was collecting underwear. And, and I mean, criminals do collect trophies, and these literally were crime trophies that he was collecting. He started putting them in a room in his house. And basically, they were filling up. There were hundreds and hundreds of pieces of lingerie that he'd gathered. The disgraced colonel is arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree murder, two brutal sexual assaults, plus 82 breaking and entering and theft-related charges. The once model military man is sentenced to two terms of life in prison with no chance of parole. The victim's families are in court when the verdict is read. Kind of bring my sister's face back into it so it's not all about him and it's not all about what he's done. And try and remember there is families that are very angry at what he's done. Two months after his sentence, Russell Williams' wife filed for divorce. She maintains that she knew nothing about his secret and deadly double life. And that's something I want to talk to this next person about. How do people with these Jekyll and Hyde personalities fool the folks around them? For that, let me bring in forensic psychologist Dr. Lou Schlesinger. Thanks for being here. As always, I appreciate it. Thanks. How does the wife not know this is going on? That's very typical, Chris. We've heard this for over 100 years. The average person listens to this and they say, how could it possibly be that she lives with him 
even didn't know it. It happens all the time because they keep that part of their personality highly encapsulated and not visible to really anybody else. So they compartmentalize they that compartment evil part of their life. Without a doubt, yes. This guy reminds me of another case we've covered, the BTK killer. This guy lived a normal suburban life and he's killing women right. all along the way. Well, these murders are sexually motivated. That's why he's doing it. You know, these guys also, when they're in their families, they're also described as good fathers and good husbands. That's how- Little league coaches. He, he, without Little. a doubt, yeah, without a doubt. So he was taking videos and pictures of his victims. What does that say about his psyche? Well, he's doing that to create his own pornography. Very often, a serial killer in prison will demand his crime scene photos saying that he's working on his appeal. It's not for his appeal. He wants to relive the crime with the pornography of the crime scene. You've actually done studies on rapid sequence serial sexual homicide. Can you break this down as how it relates to the Colonel's case? We thought for many, many years that the serial killer kills and then he deliberates for a long period of time, six months a year, kills again. In our research that I do with the FBI, we found that close to 50% of serial sexual murderers kill in rapid sequence, some within the same rapid sequence spree, and others kill in clusters, one and two, and then a period of time, three, four, and five. Dr. Liu, thank you as always for your insight into this very disturbing case. For more information, you can go to CrimeWatchDaily.com. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.